We are live. Yes, we are. So look at us. Look at us. For those of you that popped into our test earlier, thank you. <laughs> Please come back. Yeah. They may have been like, oh my gosh, I don't know about this. If this is what the real thing's going to be like, I don't want to be in it. <laughs> Goodness gracious. Take a few minutes to let people get on here, like and share as you arrive. That's what I'm trying to do is like and share. Hey, I think we're live. <laughs> well, we are. Well, wasn't that your phone telling you that we're live? I need to turn the thing off. Perfect. I'm going to share it. Share it. Uh-oh. The closed caption said partridge. And I don't think at any time we said it sounded like partridge. <laughs> I don't know. Oh well. Welcome back, Christine. <laughs> We're we'll try to do better. <laughs> uh, where do you see that it shows them popping in? Oh, you're cheating. No, I'm not cheating. I'm just making sure that we're moving and, and everything is normal looking on their end. Partridge. There it is. In a pear tree. Say hi in the chat as you log on. Yeah, because we can't. We're using a different platform now, so... We can't always see who's here and we would love to know or you can cannot either way <laughs> we welcome we you there you could be a silent watcher Is that a movie <laughs> probably ryan peters my friend how's it going <laughs> Sorry, I got to put this Chick-fil-A order in for my daughter. How far away are they? She's on Gun Barrel. Well, she's going to come in while we're doing this. Yeah, I told her. Just say, go put your stuff in the bedroom and be quiet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she's got, she brought the cat with her, so. Oh, no. <laughs> so. Molly, that cat will stay in that room. What color and kind of vehicle? We'll get started here in a minute. All right. Don't leave. Yeah. <laughs> stay off the roads and sidewalks. Yeah. She's 26, but, you know, there's still some question. <laughs> whether she should have a license or not. She's had it for 10 years, but. Chris with her or is it just her? Just her. Chris is going for a guy's weekend to the Florida State game. Oh. Well, all the husbands are out of town then. Congrats, man. Ryan got his CDL. He can drive 18 wheelers now. <laughs> Start delivering to Chattanooga. A gray. I'll take you to Chickamauga Battlefield. Oh, there's spooky stuff there. Oh, come on. Why is this app not working? <laughs> okay, win for losing. Here we go. I'm trying not to be distracted. Failing. I know. Well, you can talk about things. I can talk about things. Oh, she's arrived. Oh, she's already there. 
Well, we're doing a split live today. If you haven't noticed, I'm coming to you live from the uh, great state of Indiana. I'm up here in Indianapolis on a short-term assignment for work. I've uh, been up here for a week, and I got two more to go. So a total of three weeks up here. Ryan, come over to Indianapolis. I'm over here. Leah's still in Chattanooga, which, correct me if I'm wrong, that's a picture of Chattanooga behind you, isn't it? Yeah, from 1886. That's old. Yes. It looks a whole lot different than today. People are probably still just as mean. Alexa, stop. Did you say her name? No. Did you? No. Okay. Maybe somebody thought of it. Well, I mean, she works for the CIA. Allegedly. All right. Let me start pulling some info up here. I had to run and get dinner before this because in Indianapolis, they roll up the streets pretty much at like 8 and 9 o'clock. So after that, there is nothing open up here. What would you just say? Sorry, my children are texting me. They have had nothing to do with me all day long. And then, okay. I was just talking about how... Uh, I had to go get dinner, and I'm just why I'm pulling stuff up because everything rolls up the streets around here at eight nine o'clock. Oh, there you go. Right. So, in honor of what I always do, it's September second, and I'm going to pick this one for you, Leah. Today is National Lazy Moms Day. Because you're not getting. Because you're not getting to be a lazy mom because the children are blowing your phone up. I never get to be a lazy mom. <laughs> <laughs> Is there a such thing? It's also bring your manners to work day. Well, you should have done that. should be every day. <laughs> you should have done that to this live. Oh, snap. <laughs> <laughs> You're lucky, there's six, you're lucky there's six there's six witnesses. You're, you're like I can't say nothing. It's gonna be used in court. <laughs> I was gonna say, can Facebook video be used in court? Pretty sure it can be. I'm sure. Yeah. Cold? No. Oh, no, we got a lot of dead air here. Let's get moving. Yeah, okay. All right, so um, for those of you getting in, I know there's a couple of other people dropping in. We'll uh, go ahead and get started on uh, this uh, hey, national hi to us. Day. Do what? Say hi to us. Say hi to us. Like and share the video, please. Uh, I am in Indianapolis. Leah is in Chattanooga. I'll be up here for another couple of weeks. I'm actually been doing some research to see what kind of haunted and or spooky stuff is in this area and quite a few mansions that are now turned into museums and some other things uh, i'm going to spend more time on an actual off day i've worked every day since i've gotten up here uh try to find something around here i did find something of interest called the indiana catacombs which evidently is only open certain days of the year and none of them are while i'm here so <laughs> i get to miss out on that totally so if i find something that's actually interesting and i can live it i will if not i will video what i can pictures such and that and make sure i get that shared out to everybody sweet maybe we'll get to do a live or something I'd like to be able to. It's been a long time since we've done something like that. And now since we can split screen. All right, all right, right. Welcome to uh, the new technology. All right, so we'll go ahead and get this thing kicked off. Um, kind of start out on a bummer note. Um, we, uh, we lost a dear friend here uh, recently. 
uh, those of you that have followed our page, followed the team for a uh, a while, know that we had uh, a member named Jack Haynes. Uh, he was actually on our last live. So yes. if you, and I haven't taken that one down yet. Uh, typically, I move them to YouTube, but I've left that one up on the page, and I may just leave that up on our page. I'll still move it to YouTube, but Jack was on our last live, and everything okay? Up there? Me. All right. Um, Jack passed away. Um, he um, had a massive heart attack, and. Uh, just kind of came out of nowhere. No one expected it. Uh, we found out about it on, well, it was the day it happened. It was on a Saturday. Um, the blessing of everything, though, is we did have the opportunity to go the previous weekend and actually spend the evening with him on his uh, Paranuga tour, which was amazing. Uh, really, really glad that we got to spend that time with him. Uh, just walking around town talking about stuff. Um, I know I'm saying um a lot, but really trying to hold back a lot. Uh, Jack was a dear, dear friend. Um, I loved him like a brother, and I just, I don't have a whole lot of words. I'm sorry. Yeah. Leah, do you, do you want to say anything? Um, just very, very much missed. Such a, uh, I mean, you can't say enough good things. Just a overall wonderful human being that authentically loved people, loved others, was always um, there for you, always checking on you to see how you are. Um, <clears throat> making sure, you know, you're all okay, just so selfless. And, um, and one thing that I always appreciated about him, I mean, whenever you were with him, it was, I mean, you had his attention. He was, you know, focused on you and your well-being and, and how you were. And, and, you know, not to mention just his, um, amazing ability to be intuitive of how you know how sometimes you can put on a brave face but you know inward you're just falling apart it's just so intuitive and discerning and um just a wonderful human being and um and of course we he and i shared you know i guess more on a spiritual aspect of as far as he had you know, uh, sensitivities and abilities and discernment. And uh, we um, we saw or sensed things a little differently, but, you know, when whenever we were together, what I could see and what he could, you know, sense or feel or, or discern, you know, it was just a amazing combo. You know, it was like a, a full all round type thing. So, um, you know, always enjoyed working with him and just knowing him and being, um, a, just a wonderful friend. Um, I, uh, I first met him, we were coworkers and, um, I just knew that moment and he and I used to talk about it. You know, that moment that we saw each other, we just kind of you know, had that spiritual type connection of where, you know, I know that our relationship in the future, like we're going to be working together or, you know, there's going to be something, something to that. And uh, sure enough, you know, God's intervention brought us back together and we were able to work together in the paranormal field. And it just, he was such a blessing. I, I can't say that enough. Oh, yeah, and Jessica's with us. Thank you for joining us, Jessica. Yes. Uh, the first time I met Jack was actually on a, a residential investigation. Um, it was at an apartment building. Don't ask me where it was. It's been so many years ago, but I remember um, we had been called in. Red Bank. Um, it was Red Bank. We were called in to assist another team of some friends of ours. Um, 
Lee and I got called in, and then they they called him in as well. Uh, because if I remember correctly, Toria had also met Jack through work. Yeah, yeah. So, because um, all y'all worked at the same place, I don't think all at the same time. But he uh, he came in, and I remember he came in in his his vestments yeah. and everything. And I can't remember to save my life exactly what it was that we were talking about, but there was something that had been brought up about um, his religion and his ability to be able to do something. I think it was some sort of blessing or whatever, or it might have, actually, I think it might have been making holy water. It's exactly what it was, which he had a great joke about that. Yeah. But this was, this was, he was actually being serious about it. And he was like, you know, in order to make holy water, you have to have permission from the archdiocese of your, uh, your church or whatever. And he goes, and it just so happens. And he reached up and he took off. And I don't know what the little thing was called. Took it off, looked at it, went, good thing I know the archdiocese person. <laughs> Talking yeah. about himself. So um, it was from that point that like, I knew uh, I knew we had a, a good guy on our hands at that point. You know, good sense of humor, great human being. Um, always called me a knight, which... Um, meant a lot to me like i felt like he saw things in me that i didn't um but uh love the guy loved him loved him oh yeah the bet i mean you uh, i don't know you can't just you can just never say enough goodness i mean that's that's all he was was just goodness in in human form we are we forget all the people Oh. We forget that he would Santa. He was a Santa as well. Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, it's rightly so. I tried to get me in on it a couple of times. He's like, uh, he goes, "You need to come to one of our breakfasts." I'm like, I don't know, man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but his, uh, his wife is um, actually joining us on chat here, and um, but yeah, that that's so true. To know Jack was to love him. I mean, you couldn't help it. And, um, and he loved you, <laughs> period. You know, it didn't matter about anything. He loved people. He definitely um, loved people like Jesus loves people. It, I mean, there's, it's unconditional. So, um, <clears throat> yeah, a, a very huge loss. Uh, but, you know, one consolation is we will get to see him again. Oh, absolutely. So I can't wait to have those conversations with him when when we get there and and him, you know, give us the tour of the place. <laughs> I think a tour of heaven led by Jack Haynes would be amazing. <laughs> oh, yeah. And you know it. <laughs> yeah. But we've also... Um, um, his family, uh, they have a, um, a GoFundMe link that we have posted on our Paranormal Help page. Yes. So please make sure, you know, every little bit helps. I mean, even if you can just give a little bit or more than a little bit or whatever, you know, every little thing helps. So, uh, you know, please help his family. He has uh, two children and then one one little children. <laughs> so, yeah. <laughs> three total. <laughs> yeah, three total. So I mean, it's uh, you know that's that's a very huge loss. Not only just him as a man, but also as you know a father, a husband, and a provider. So uh, you know, please help them any any way that you can. Appreciate it. Jess, you're welcome. Absolutely. And if you need anything from us, uh, just definitely reach out. And um, there. Thank you for sharing him with us. I know that Absolutely. there were notes that he got he got pulled away from uh, you and and y'all's daughter on many a late night. So just just thank you for that. Yeah, he. I'm sure he got pulled by lots of folks, <laughs> and uh, so definitely I know so many appreciate you for sharing him with the world. Mm -hmm. so. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Many, many people. <laughs> oh, me. 
Yes. That's the problem. <laughs> Give me just a second. <laughs> All right. So, kind of the topic I want to discuss tonight. Um, let me start out with a. Uh, uh, what's that word called? Preamble, precursor, um, caveat to this. We as a that they're out there says it all, Jess. Yes, hundred percent. So, back to my caveat to our topic for tonight. We don't typically buy into conspiracy theories. I am, I follow a lot of conspiracy theories, but I like them because they're entertaining. I think I've said this before, but some of them are so far out there. It's like, wow, this should be a movie or a TV series. But this one in particular, um, I kind of wanted to touch base on because there is a distinct possibility that we may have been affected by it. Well, my, not so much myself, but Leah. So, just a quick poll of the audience of anybody that's still with us. I'll give you just a couple of seconds to answer. How many people are familiar with CERN? C E R N. Anybody? In the intro, I had nothing, knew nothing about it until someone brought it up to me. I, and that was just three, three, four weeks ago ish. Yep. Well, mid uh, July, shortly after July. So, yeah, first of August, about a month ago. Month, month and a half. Well, no, right, I didn't so, find out till the end of September, or I'm sorry, the end of July. But yeah, I guess what happened was the beginning of July, right? Correct. Okay. All right, so CERN is the European Organization for Nuclear Research. Um, I don't know where the C fits in there. But uh, it was, uh, they built a, dis a machine, a device called a Hadron Collider. Uh, you'll hear, it, it's called the Large Hadron Collider. You'll hear people refer to it as the LHC. Um, it was built between 1998 and 2008. So it took 10 years to build this thing. It is what's called a synchrotron accelerator. Um, basically... It is, let me give you a little bit of description, some stats on it, because this thing is massive. It is, it lies in a tunnel 27 kilometers, that's 17 miles in circumference. Goodness. 17 miles around. It is 175 meters, 574 feet uh, in depth, and it's located uh, near Geneva at the France-Switzerland border. So, not to get into a whole lot of the technical aspect of this thing, if you want to, if, if you're, you know, into the scientific portion of it and you want to get into that, you can go research about it. Uh, again, it's called the Large Hadron, Hadron Collider. I'm going to type it in because the first time I um, looked up the word, I spelled it wrong. So, I want to make sure y'all don't do the same thing I did. Because I put hydron, like hydrogen, but it's called the Large Hadron Collider. The In its simplest form, this thing, it basically shoots protons and all sorts of matter at each other and causes collisions of the protons and in turn measures the speed, the energy created, that type of thing. In its shortest definition, one of the things that they're trying to do, it allows physicists to test the predictions of different theories of particle physics, which is way above my head. And it includes the measuring properties of what's called the Higgs boson. I'll put that one up here for everybody as well. The Higgs oh, boson. Somebody lives around here. That's old Higgs bogan. Oh, Higgs boson over there. So the Higgs boson, or it's also called the Higgs, do what? Nothing, I'm being stupid. Uh oh. <laughs> the Higgs particle, it is what a lot of people will refer to it as the God particle. It's also what 
uh, the Collider. Go ahead. On the movie. Yes. So, <laughs> those of you cinephiles out there, uh, you've seen the movie Angels and Demons uh, with Tom Hanks. The beginning of that movie, whenever they're creating antimatter, or, um, or yeah, antimatter in the... You and McGregor. So cylindrical things. Ewan McGregor's in that one too. Will be one. Um, what they're they're actually at the the LHC. They're at CERN and the Hadron Collider. They actually were allowed to film those scenes at that location. So what you see there is legitimate, with the exception of them creating the antimatter. Of course, that's all film. But that's the type of thing that they do there. So they're in. Basically, they're trying to. Like I said, measure speeds, particle physics, part of it also to determine about the Higgs boson, the God particle, the spark of creation, if you will, is what they're trying to look for. So, if you go into the internet, and this might be risky because I've clicked away from the page. Can y'all still see me? Yeah. Uh, there are, let me see y'all. I'm going to drop this link in the chat. This is actually the CERN website with the link directly to the Hadron Collider. So this is their story, their description of the Collider. You may understand it far better than I do. Um, I kind of had to read some of it and then go to Wikipedia to be able to translate it because it's like I said, particle physics is way, way above my, uh, my level. So, the, the last time that the Hadron Collider was turned on was back in 2008. When it was turned on is about the time frame that people started experiencing what you have, may have heard as the Mandela Effect. Now, Leah, do you know what the Mandela Effect is? I do. You want to tell him? <laughs> well... It's where you think like a logo or a show or, or something out there is one way, but it turns out it never was. It's probably better to explain in examples. So, um, well, I just went blank. <laughs> so, so how many people remember the, was it, did you watch or read the Berenstain Bears or the Bernstein Bears? Right. Did the did the Monopoly guy have a monocle or did he not? Did Curious George have a tail or not? Right. So and However, to give a, there was a real movie. Oh Lord, no. <laughs> Sidbad was not in a movie called Shazam. I've seen it. I know it. It's true. It's true. You can't tell me otherwise. I'm well sorry. I I would swear that I've read or watched the Bernstein Bears all my life, and it wasn't until I was much older that I realized that it was Berenstain. So, <laughs> who knows? So, the Mandela Effect is named the Mandela Effect because a lot of people vividly remember Nelson Mandela, who was former president of South Africa, dying in, like, the mid-'80s. But the man died, I think it was like early 2000s. I mean, he lived for a long time. He's but like people, a POW type, like just, I thought he died in prison. Well, he was in prison for many years as a, an exile to his country or something along those lines. People thought he died in prison. People vividly remember seeing his funeral on television and things like that. But he didn't die for another 20, 30 years. So that's where the name of the Mandela Effect came in. So people believe that when CERN turned this machine on, that it cast this world into an alternate universe. Uh-oh. Parallel universe? Right. And that's why you see things that you may not remember things the way they actually were, because in the universe we were in, that was true. We are now in a completely alternate reality. Well, with things how they are today, I want to go back to the other one. I know. <laughs> I know. Do I get a choice? Like, where's the back door? 
It's like, can we, uh, can we go back and do this thing again? <laughs> nutsy, nutsy, nutsy. So, um, there is a big. So if anybody has any questions or comments or wants to add, you know, definitely please comment. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, don't let me, <laughs> and don't let me do all the talking. All right, where was I? I, I got to find something here. So the machine, as I said, it was opened up. It was turned on back in 2008. I, I'm trying to see here. My information just locked down on me. <laughs> Give me just a minute. <laughs> okay, so. Ryan, Ryan wants to go back too. <laughs> So it was initially uh, went operational on September 10th of 2008. Uh, it was initial initial testing was delayed for 14 months. So from 2008 to November of 2009, it was not active. But then it ran for three straight years, from 2010 to 2013. So after 2013, they turned it off. So we get the theory of the Mandela effect. A lot of people believe, and uh, there's several websites that you can go out there and look at, just Google it, that believe that we could actually, with what they're doing, potentially create black holes, which leads to the potential of us going into alternate dimensions. Could be related to belief in urban legends or folklore. That's, that's a really good point there, Timothy. That's a really interesting theory. Hmm. Have to do some research on that. I know. I'm, I might have more to say on that later. Oh, okay. that's really, really good. That's that's really really good. Um. But anyway, <laughs> if you think about it, I mean, we're doing things that man has never done before. Not sure if we're supposed to be doing it, but you know. We're looking at the, you know, with these particles colliding and whatnot, there is the theory, the possibility that this thing could open up black holes, which then would, could potentially, you know, suck us all in. And then now, you know, Curious George doesn't have a tail anymore. So, he like I said, he never had a tail. In 2013, it turned off. Well, July 5th of this year, it went back on, went back online. Now, before I get too far ahead of myself, TikTok is going crazy with videos, conspiracy theories, things of that nature, people talking about there being, you know, well, this and that, and Mandela effect all over the place. But there is the concern and the fear that this, the Hydron Collider is going to open a portal to hell. And there's actually... I'm going to post this link in here. Again, not saying one way or the other. USA Today posted a fact check. Why do we need a portal when a highway has already been established? Back right? I mean, Satan is the prince of the power of the air. He's already here. So why do we need to give him a door? You know, he doesn't need his own door, his own dressing room. I meant the song. Right. Okay, I'm sorry. I was going to spiritual route. You were going, okay, whatever. I'm way serious on that. <laughs> but the link here below, this is from USA Today. They're talk this is their fact check of how that scientists are not opening a portal to hell. Are they? I mean, do you think they'll come out and say, oh, yeah, we are? Yeah, it's busted. <laughs> oh, my crap, you know? <laughs> So, you know, take that article for whatever you think on it, you know, however you believe it. I'm not going to judge anybody either way uh, because there is admittedly some very, very strange things going on in the world. <laughs> so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to read a little bit off of an article. Now, this happened back in 2016. So on the grounds of CERN. It says a human sacrifice has been staged in the grounds of the European Organization for Nuclear Research. That's CERN. A video circulating online shows hooded figures apparently engaging in a ritual staged under a huge statue of a Hindu deity at the end of which a woman is stabbed. 
Now I'm not going to link this. I'm not going to link the video. If you, that video. if you want to look it up, you, you know, you can go look it. I'm not going to condone it. Um, it's like an opening games or like an opening ceremony to, uh, to something. Yeah. And I'm not sure I, I'd have to look back again, but there is a, the statue of a Hindu deity and all this stuff yeah. on the grounds of CERN. It has been confirmed that the video was filmed there, but there is talk that it was, you know, that it wasn't, you know, CERN, of course, like, oh, we would never do anything like that um, because they would never admit to it, like Leah said. But there is a, the potential that it is a hoax. CERN's official statement on the matter is that people snuck onto the grounds and filmed the video themselves. Did they? We'll never know. I mean, it's but, in daylight, broad daylight. It's it's a pretty little. I mean, I you know don't watch it with kids in the room. It can be a little disturbing. Yeah, don't. I would. And if you, it. yeah, but excuse me. Coffee when cat. I saw, it, do what? Coffee cat. Yeah. <laughs> when I saw that, <laughs> well, I saw yours. I'm like, hey, I'm actually thirsty. <laughs> If I can get a little bit more information here on it, like I said again, I'm not gonna. Uh... Oh man, yeah. forgive me. The web, the website, the website that I pulled up to read about says register for free to continue reading. Like I don't think so. We're good. <laughs> okay. So actually, Wikipedia has a page on it that says that it is a hoax. But again, what don't do know. you believe anymore? You know, right? So the video caused controversy both by creating mockery of existing theories and fueling existing conspiracy theories about certain activities. Even though the video was taken in front of a statue of dancing Shiva, uh, that's the Hindu deity. Some believe it was satanic. This further fuel theories that CERN's goal was to use their hydrant collider to create a portal to hell, summon the Antichrist, or destroy the universe. Them French Swiss are doing a lot of stuff out there. Busy folks to be so neutral. Right. So, and the Exposing Satanism uh, website actually has a pretty good article about uh, asking whether they're opening the gates of hell. Um, their main theory behind it is because scientists are looking for this so-called God, God particle that they are um, just they're they're mocking God. Certain scientists mocking scripture that depicts the right hand of God. Certain experiments suggest the universe is left-handed, and they're going against Isaiah forty-eight thirteen. Mine hand also hath laid the foundation of the earth, and my right hand hath spanned the heavens. Where I can, where I call unto them, they stand up together. So What's that a lot word? of people, Isaiah, uh, Isaiah, uh, Isaiah forty-eight thirteen. 4813. So, 4813. So short and sweet, uh, man is trying to play God by creating, using the cre you know, this God particle that's supposed to be the foundation, the creation of the world. Um, those that believe the Big Bang, basically not in this, not the show. Uh, <laughs> penny, penny, penny. Um, the uh, the fact that they're trying to find this God particle, they're trying to say that, you know, basically they're trying to, they could create a universe similar to where the Big Bang did. And this, again, is from the scientific perspective of the Big Bang. I have a different belief in the Big Bang. Uh, God spoke, bang, there it was. So they're trying to say that, you know, God did not create, that basically, you know, as we've been taught in science classes most of our lives that the earth was created more or less by accident. But I'm sorry, I challenge anybody to, to go out and just look at creation and tell me that's an accident. Now there's some people that might be accidents. Oh. <laughs> sorry, we were getting too serious. Maybe there's potential. <laughs> there's always a potential. Active there's always. Yet. Yeah. <laughs> I was talking about the surprise. I was like, that's a fancy term for an accident. Appreciate that. <laughs> so anyway, 
back on July 5th, they, uh, they turned this thing back on. And around about the same time, a group this year, this year July 5th, 2022, uh, a group called the Intercessors for America got together and began to pray this prayer. Lord, we acknowledge that you alone are our creator. We pray that this collider experiment at CERN would fail and there would be no demonic power released. You alone are God. So the concern again being that this thing is opening up portals. It's causing um, demonic forces to come through. When they turned it on, there was another round of the Mandela effect that occurred. I say that lightly, you know, it could be just one of those, you know, oh, they've turned it on, let's come up with something else to talk about. But people start talking about the Mandela effect again. They said that there were more things that had changed uh, even Any further. examples of that? I don't. I wish I had. Um, I may, there's a point of this, You. I'm sure you're aware there's a point of this. I'm going to turn it over to you. I will try to see if I can look up, yeah. I'm going to look up a couple of examples um, while you're talking. Um, be ready. Mm -hmm. So so this group, the Intercessors for America, their website is ifapray.org. And... Hold on. Sorry. IFA... Oh, pray. Yeah. Dot org? Yeah, it looks like ifapray.org. They're the Intercessors for America, and they've been praying on this. So, and as it stands right now, it's like eight, uh, there's actually a button that you can click. To, if you prayed that prayer, uh, 830 people have prayed that prayer thus far, um, at least those that have, you know, acknowledged it. So, what brought this whole topic to mind, ironically enough, was Leah's hairdresser. <laughs> yeah. So. Shine Studio. <laughs> uh, so let me. Um, I'll give a little bit of end result, and then Leah's going to give you the backstory, and then I'm going to look up examples of Mandela effect. So back in, like I said, July 5th, no, about the tail end of July, third week in July, give or take, yeah. Lee, who is unfortunately prone to migraine headaches, had one of, I don't even know if I want to say one, I feel like it was multiple, or it might have it been was, one. It was over several days. Just headache. Five days. Like, the worst I've seen. I mean, we've we were we've been married for thirteen years now, and I've seen the headaches come and go, but I've never seen it last this long or debilitate her as bad as it did. Um, it eventually subsided. I don't know after how long. You said days. I felt like it was a week it was or five more. or six days, at least. Just now, constant, not, you know, how if for migraine sufferers, you know, how sometimes you can have, you know, it, it'll kind of peak and then you can kind of, you know, come down just a little bit and then, you know, like this, but it was consistent. I tried everything. I tried every over the counter known to man. I tried my even prescription. I take Imatrex, which usually, you know, knocks it like that wasn't even touching it and I was taking multiples of those a day and it I mean nothing nothing was touching it and I was even going to I I have never been to the chiropractor so much in my life I mean you know thinking that maybe it was some kind of, I did not know what was going on with me I thought maybe I was just crazy misaligned and so I was going to the chiropractor about three or four times a week and uh just n no relief and she was even um my chiropractor was even using some kind of um um ultrasound I guess, 
some kind of um, like icy hot type oh. thing, and then also doing an ultrasound treatment over it. And I mean, nothing, nothing was touching it. I even went to like had a deep tissue massage, you know, just something of, of thinking maybe it's just stress and tension. But I have never experienced anything like that for that length of time and no relief. Go ahead. So when all that happened, Leah has a hairdresser that she goes to. And I suppose that she was, you know, of course, you know, like it right now. Sorry. Like they do, you know, in the in the salon, the women they likes to talk, <laughs> and um, <laughs> one additional caveat here is keep in mind, you know, everyone, you know, we we talk about it on here all the time. Leah has a spiritual gift of discernment, so she can feel things. She can also feel is empathic the right word to use there. I mean, you can pick up on sometimes energies and things of that nature yeah I, I mean i can feel things i can sense things i through either touch i'm tactile or just you know walking into an atmosphere or, or a different room but not just that i don't just feel things i also see things right. um, so i i physically see them it, it you know, I, for anybody that has watched this at least once or so, you've probably heard me describe it as, you know, those books where you have a picture and then there's a, um, like a, a plastic sheet that you can put over that base picture and it just adds another dimension. So that that's kind of like I can look through here, see this room, and then there's another sheet over where you can, you know, just see um, like through the spiritual veil, I guess, is, is a way to, to describe it. So Leah's hairdresser had told her about this intercessory thing going on. She told me about CERN and I, she goes, have you, have you heard of CERN? Well, how it started was I got in, got there and she goes, so, you know, like all, all the times. So how have you been? Cause I usually see her once every five or six weeks. And so uh, she goes, so how have you been? And I just, and I usually don't talk about having migraines or not feeling well or anything, but I was like, I tell you what, I have had something going on with me and I just can't explain. It's been the worst thing ever. And I, by then I had relief because my appointment was at the end of July. But I said at the beginning of this month, I don't know what was going on, but I could not get this migraine to either lessen or stop. And I tried everything. And she, I mean, she knows about um, my abilities. So um, she goes, have you heard of CERN? I said, uh, nope. What is that? And then she went on to explain about what Mike's been talking about. And it was that time frame that I was going through that. So it kind of makes me wonder, you know, was I just sensitive to all that was going on or all that they were admitting into our Earth's atmosphere or whatever? Because if you take into account them, th th them turning that thing on, now, it'd be interesting to look back at 2010, 2013 to see, like, what kind of headaches you had back then. Um, no way of knowing, of course. But the amount of, what's the word I'm looking for, headlines that this has raised, the amount of theories that are out there, you take into consideration that much energy going on because this thing is massive yeah. and it creates energy levels that I don't even know how to explain to you because again it's that physics language but the amount of energy that that thing creates and then you're looking at hundreds if not more people in intercessory prayer there's nothing you know there's nothing you know nothing stronger than prayer you get a bunch of people together praying in the spirit realm things are going to start moving 
And I can only imagine just the amount of things Spiritual going on. Right. Absolutely. And that's and I think that's what she said to you was that um yeah. some along the lines of the war that they were in warfare and that it was one of the hardest things they had done, something along those lines. Yeah. Like the biggest battle because of the sheer enormity of what was going on over there. And that it, I mean, it was a huge battle on a spiritual realm. So, um, so just thinking back, I mean, for all the sensitive folks that watch us, you know, just think about, think back to that time frame. And do you, I mean, were you feeling like having issues or feeling not good or well, or, you know, it just, it really makes you wonder. And see uh, all the stuff that, you know, again, cause self-proclaimed believing skeptic here. And again, I don't buy into conspiracy theories. I will read into them and I will research to see if there are some truth behind it. But, you know, all the stuff that I've read, you know, it's interesting, but what she has experienced and what, I mean, I have proof that occurred with this intercessory prayer. I know that the prayer stirred up something. Oh, yeah. And that kind of, you know, it's one of those things like if, if they were praying for it and it wasn't needed, then I don't think there would have been that a movement in the spirit realm. Does that make sense? That much yeah. of a move. But yeah. if that, that much moving in the spiritual realm during this prayer time, during this intercession, something is going on. Now, whether CERN or whoever is intentionally trying to do it, no way of knowing that. We'll never know. But let's err on the side of positivity and say that they're just legitimately trying to forward science. But you're dealing with you know, things that could potentially, you know, release energy. What does the spirit realm use? What does it need? Energy. And it's who very is positive. the principality of the air? Right. So is it something that man is doing to try to bring Satan in? Or is Satan just utilizing it as his own doorway, whether man likes it or not? Right. Either way, something's going on. And if it's true about the the ceremonial or ritualistic type things that they're doing over there, I mean, that's kind of a no-brainer right. that, you know, something is, you know, emitting over there. I've got a couple of new Mandela effects. You want me to read them? Sure. Well, uh... And of course, guys, with you know, with everything that we put out there, you know, it's up to you to make the decision on what you think, one way or the other. We're not here to push beliefs. We're just here yeah. to 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 report the news, so to speak, report well, the facts. Information, and then you are uh, like with anything, search the scriptures for yourself and do your own Absolutely. research. So. And I always, if no, if no, there's nothing else behind this. I think these are fun. Because they make you think. Because, again, it's like, no, I distinctly remember this. Well, I know um, there was a Sinbad movie called Shazam. So anybody watching, Leah, you can play along, too. <laughs> the Raisin Bran Sun on the Raisin Bran box? Yeah. He wears sunglasses, right? No. Correct. But there are people that distinctly remember the Raisin Brand son wearing sunglasses. Hmm. Do you remember the Lamb Chop? Yeah. So, remember the song they would used to sing at the end of the show? No. You don't? <laughs> no. Brian what, Brian, what song is it? Yeah, sing it for us. <laughs> <laughs> What was the main line of the song? That's that's the main thing we're looking for here. Because we, we huge lamb chop watchers. Megan was all about Barney, so I can quote you every song Barney ever sung. Right. So lamp like. Oh no, the glasses. Oh okay. Yeah. <laughs> so the um, the song what 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 people would sing 
was the song that never ends. This is the song that never ends. It goes on and on, my friends. Okay, so it wasn't the song that never ends. It's the song that doesn't end. I, I have no, nothing in this game. I, I'm not a lamb chop connoisseur. All right. Um, on the package of a Kit Kat bar, is there a hyphen? Is there a hyphen between kit and cat? No. That's correct. But there are those that say that there used to be a hyphen in between kit and cat. Huh. Has anybody seen that out there? Comment if you have. There was. Ryan says there was. <laughs> no, sir. There was never a hyphen between kit and cat. Ryan, you are a victim. <laughs> I've got to show this one just for Leah. Shazam! He had on. There was the never, never. No, he wore in that movie. He wore like the hammer pants. <laughs> <laughs> you remember in the oh, hammer pants? Right. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna do two more, and these are actually two of my favorite. Um. Is Jiffy peanut butter a thing? Jiffy? Jiffy Jif peanut Jiff? Yes. There are some people that specifically remember Jiffy peanut butter. Now, I know Jiffy popcorn. Yeah. And Jiff peanut butter. Yeah. So, I don't know. Um... Fruit of the Loom underwear. Does anybody remember the logo with the fruit and the cornucopia behind it? Yes, there was a cornucopia. Yes. Evidently, there was never a cornucopia. I don't know about this one because I remember a cornucopia. Oh, so it's okay if you remember it, but nobody else. No, because as a, as a, as a young man... Uh, Fruit of the Loom was my brand. And I seem to recall remembering a cornucopia on the back of my drawers. So. <laughs> All right. That's, that's enough here. Like, go online, look up Mandela Effect. There's a lot of them out there that are really, really funny. Um, but actually, they'll, they'll make you think about it. Uh, my favorite one that, again, I never watched the show, nor do I collect the trading cards, but Pikachu, people distinctly remember Pikachu having a black lightning bolt on the tip of his tail, and he did not. Um, I see Leah thinking on this one, so I'm going to pull I it up. Know. I don't know. I went uh, a choo-choo. All right. Wait, give it time to focus. Fail. Hold on a second. Let me okay. let me pull out from underneath that light there a little bit. Oh. Okay, a little bit. So the Pikachu with the black tail is what I I feel like I remember, but evidently that's not the case. It's this one over here. Or no. This one over here. Ryan said he did. I don't know, though. <laughs> Messed up. Blame CERN for ruining our childhood. Because <laughs> I'm sure Sinbad in a genie movie called Shazam was probably pretty good. It was awesome. I remember watching it as a little kid. What color was the VHS tape? I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Black? <laughs> <laughs> They were all black for the most part. Well, you see, like some of the old um, Nintendo, not Nintendo, Nickelodeon. They both start with N. A lot of the old Nickelodeon movies, sometimes they came in like green or orange cassettes. Oh, we got a cat sighting. Yeah, you, I was surprised it waited this late. Who is it? Dobby. Hey, Dobby. 
They've been in there with Megan. <laughs> Well, we're coming up right on the hour mark, so uh, we will go ahead and wrap this up. If anybody got any questions, comments, uh, anything, anything, comments anything. complaints, <laughs> consternations? <laughs> we'll give it a minute here. A lot of talking, a lot of chitty chatting, but a lot of inter interesting, interesting information. Like I said, if you're really into this kind of thing, go out there, use the links that we posted in the chat. Uh, look at this and just kind of decide for yourself. Um, typically, we don't get into too much of the scientific. We typically stay on the biblical and the spiritual route, but I just thought this was interesting, again, because of Leah's um, interaction. Yeah, I mean, it's good to know because... I only I didn't know about all the things, so it, I mean it's good to know the back history, right? And if they turned it on again, which I think it's actually still on, but if there's ever another crank I up, they we'll it off. did they turn it off? I thought they did, and then that's when. Give me just a second, and I'll find out. I think whether it's, it's only on, on for a brief time. Like a few days or something. Yeah, well, the first run, like I said, it was on for three years. Let me see. Here we go. Yeah, it was down from 2018 to 2022. Became operational again on April 22nd with a new maximum beam energy of 6.8 TeV. Don't know what that is. <laughs> It officially commenced its run three physics season on July 5th. It's going to run till 2026. So oh. it's running right now. Okay. Yeah, I feel you, Christine. She says, "I'm after this, I'm second guessing my whole childhood. <laughs> <laughs> it's definitely I don't know. Round two of childhood. All right. <laughs> All right, guys. Uh, Leah has dropped our contact information down there at the bottom of the screen. Uh, if you need anything, doesn't hesitate to reach out either one of those ways. You can message us through the Facebook page. The phone number also accepts text messaging. So if you're not comfortable doing a phone call or you're like me and don't want to talk, uh, <laughs> it's like, if I've got a choice to call somebody or it's like, can I just send them a text? Yeah. No, I get it. It's that day and age. Um, but, um, uh, don't hesitate to reach out to us. Again, go back to the Paranormal Help Facebook page. Uh, click on that GoFundMe link. Um, help out the Haynes family and however you can. Um, oh, again. Say hi, Dobby. Hi, Dobby. <laughs> She's like, Pfft. Click on that link. Help them out. Um, again, just missing our friend. Uh, yeah. Started out this episode talking about Jack. If you're just now getting in, or you're just now finding out. Uh, we did lose Jack Haynes um, a couple weeks ago uh, to a massive heart attack. Pr a prime member of our team, loved member of our team. Absolutely. Um, not going to repeat. If you want to hear what we had to say about him, you can go back and watch the start of the video. But uh, this video is for him. Everything we do going forward will be in remembrance of him. So. Guys, thanks. If you want to reach out to us, hit us up. Uh, from Indianapolis, I'm signing off. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, just keep, uh, put, make sure your notifications on because since Mike is out of state, uh, we may go live at some point if he finds some, you know, spooky spots. So, uh, yeah. Guys. Thanks for joining us. Thank you. Bye.